What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with 5 reasons to buy the Motorola Moto G Play 2023. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is the Motorola Moto G Play 2023, and overall, I think this phone is one of the best values to be had in early 2023, so definitely a great way to start the year here. Now without a doubt, this phone is certainly a low-end option, however, if you're not looking to spend too much, and you just want a good, reliable smartphone, then I certainly think this phone is worth considering. So I'll be going over all my various reasons in this video. Now the first thing I wanna do is show you what all comes included here in the box. And one thing that's new this year for the Moto G Play 2023 is that we get this eco-friendly packaging. So whether that's important to you or not, this is it, but overall it's pretty good packaging, so it's effective. And then in the box itself, we have some literature here so you can see meet your G play. We also have a SIM card removal tool. And another great thing too, is that we have a wall adapter. Now it is a 10 watt USB wall adapter, but I'm certainly glad we have it here. So you don't have to go out and buy one separately. Now I do find it to be a bit ironic that this is eco-friendly packaging, but they do still give us the wall adapter because Apple, for example, justifies not giving us a wall adapter for eco-friendly reasons. And then finally, we also have a USB-C charging cable, so you can use this for charging and data transfer. Now the first reason why you might want to consider buying the Moto G Play 2023 is because of the display that we're getting here with the phone. Now, this display is not perfect by any means. For example, it is only 720p, so if you do want to watch 1080p videos here on the device, then you can't watch them in their full resolution. However, for a phone that's less than $200, I do feel like the display still does look really good. It certainly looks nice and crisp and clear. And definitely if you do want to watch video content on here or just scroll social media, or if you want to browse the web, it's great for that. And to make things even better, we do have a very large display here at 6.5 inches. So having a really big canvas for content consumption certainly makes the experience here with this device quite a bit better compared to a phone that has a smaller display. And I remember too that it wasn't that long ago that you typically expect to find smaller displays with more affordable phones. And it was really only the expensive phones that gave us a big display. So I'm glad that that trend is pretty much over with and pretty much every phone nowadays has a large display. Now there are still some options out there if you specifically want a small display, but it seems like most consumers, because of the way that they use their phone, mostly going on social media, browsing the web, doing things like that, they do tend to want a larger display like we're getting here. Now it gets even better than that. So this display also features a 90 Hertz refresh rate. So very smooth, kind of premium refresh rate. I know there are phones now that have 120 Hertz for the refresh rate, and there's some that even have a higher refresh rate, but for a lower end device, having a 90 Hertz refresh rate is a nice surprise to see here. So it is a bit smoother and a bit more premium compared to the typical 60 Hertz that you'd find. And another thing that I like about this display is that we do have a hole punch for the front facing camera here on the phone. So I'm glad that we don't have a water drop notch instead. I certainly prefer this design. And overall with having this large display and pretty small bezels, we are getting a very immersive experience here when looking at the phone. Now the bottom bezel is slightly larger, but in general, I really do like the design that we're getting and especially for an affordable device. Device, I really have no complaints. The next thing I want to discuss here are the cameras that we're getting here with the device. Now there is one shortcoming. I do wish we had an ultra wide angle camera out of these various cameras we have, but at least we do have some other appealing features here. So there's a 16 megapixel main camera, a two megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode, and a two megapixel macro camera for close up images. And then the front facing camera is five megapixels. Now heading over to the camera app, here's how things look. This is with the standard camera right now. Then from there, we can switch over to the macro camera, so we can get there close up and have things be in really good detail. We can also head over to portrait mode to get those nice blurred out backgrounds. You even have an option here to further adjust the blur. So if you want more blur or less blur, you can make those adjustments. And then we can also flip around the front facing camera to take portrait selfies too. Another nice thing too with the selfie camera is that you can actually crop out to take a group selfie. And then if you want to, there's also the option to take a standard selfie with no portrait mode. And then finally, video recording with this device maxes out at 1080p for both the front and rear cameras. So I feel like all the various camera features and options that we're getting here certainly gives us a really good value despite this device being in the lower end segment. I think what's also important is the quality of the images themselves. And you definitely should check out my full review video about the Moto G Play 2023 on my channel as I do have a variety of different photo and video samples in that video. But overall, I feel like it definitely takes great looking images, certainly good enough to post on social media. As you know, that's really important to me because my business is mostly based around social media, but being being able to take photos and videos that are you know worth posting and if you go on a vacation you can know that you can take this phone with you and you're able to capture 
images at a high enough quality that you'll certainly want to keep them. You know, it's definitely a good thing and a nice surprise to find here with a lower end device. Now, the next thing I want to point out is that we are getting a fingerprint sensor here with the phone. Certainly a very convenient and quick way to access it. So you can see very accurate there and very fast. We'll try that one more time. There we go. So I'm glad we have the fingerprint sensor and it does work really well. Now, unfortunately, there is no face unlock, so keep that in mind. So you are limited with just the fingerprint sensor for accessing the phone, unless you wanna put in a pin code or some other password. I also appreciate how large of a battery that we're getting here with the Moto G Play 2023. So with this device, we're getting a 5,000 milliamp hour internal battery. So that's very large. That'll definitely give you a full day, if not two days of usage here from the phone. So that's a really good thing to see. And in addition to that, this phone does feature 10 watt fast charging. Now, I wouldn't call 10 watt fast charging that fast, but it could be slower to put it that way. And I am glad at least that the charger included is 10 watts. So I'd say in general, 10 watt charging is kind of the bare minimum you'd want for a battery as large as the one that we're getting here. But I'm glad that that is pretty much the situation that we're dealing with. And then for the final thing I want to discuss, that is the software. So with this device, we're getting Android 12 and Motorola has included a variety of their own special features to this device to kind of build on top of Android. But one thing I especially appreciate with the software is that one, it is very well optimized. So you won't find really too many bugs or anything like that. Motorola is always great about that. They don't want to sell phones that are buggy or causing you issues. So that's always great. So I always trust them when it comes to that. And then also for security too. Motorola has a great track record. In fact, Motorola is owned by Lenovo and Lenovo builds the ThinkPad laptops that are used in corporate environments and all of that. So the company certainly has a background with security being a priority. So that's certainly great. So just know that you're good to go, at least I'd hope. So that's awesome. And then another thing about the software that I like is that we're mostly getting a stock experience here. So they didn't just change things with Android just to change them. Instead, they took what was great about stock Android, kept those things, and then they did add in extra bonus features. So if you want to see those various bonus features, definitely check out my tips and tricks video here on the channel. You can also go to this Moto app here, and it does actually give you kind of a breakdown of various options as well to make the most of your smartphone. So again, overall, I'm really happy with the software that we're getting here with the device. And even though Android 13 is out right now, there aren't a ton of differences from Android 12 to Android 13. And I will say though, if you are expecting this phone to get a lot of updates and especially in a timely matter, I would probably go for a different device like a Pixel as Motorola, while the software tends to be good and refined and free of bugs, they don't necessarily give their phones that many updates, and when they do, it can take a bit of time. But I hope you enjoyed my video on five reasons to buy the Motorola Moto G Play 2023. Definitely curious to know what you think of the phone. Maybe you've already bought it. If that's the case, let me know what you think of it. And if you're thinking about getting it, let me know what you're actually going to end up doing. Are you going to get this phone? Or are you going to go for something else? And also, what are you cross-shopping this device with? I'm certainly curious to know. But with all that said, share your thoughts in the comment section below. Hello, but this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next video.